Want to win an Xbox Series S? Stick around until the end of the video to learn how. Even though many fans of the MCU feel that Thor brings one of the weakest trilogies to the franchise, Chris Hemsworth's God of Thunder was somewhat salvaged by Taika Waititi's take in the third installment in 2017's Thor Ragnarok. It's not that the 2011 and 2013 films were bad. The first film served as a pretty good origin story for Thor, and the second, even though considered by many to be one of the worst MCU installments, still had its memorable moments. Here are five satisfying and disappointing things from the Thor trilogy. Christopher Eccleston is one of the world's best actors, so MCU fans were very excited to see him portray a role in the sequel to Thor as the main villain. Sadly though, from the beginning of the film he under-delivered to what fans were expecting, as a villain with a vaguely defined evil plan who speaks in a very melodramatic voice. We can all come to an agreement that Eccleston's potential as an actor was wasted on this character, and he even spoke out against the movie in the years after the film's release. When we first met Thor, he was introduced as a very cocky and arrogant god who had everything somewhat spoon-fed to him, as he considered both his power and hammer to be his birthright. This drink, I like it. I know, it's great, right? Another! <laughs> After almost starting a war with the ice giants that his father has to save him from, Odin strips him from both his power and hammer, banishing Thor to Earth. By the end of the film, Thor has become truly worthy to pick up Mjolnir once again, and the way he measures his worthiness throughout the film is truly a delight to see, as he holds out his arm and his hammer comes flying to him. He knows he is worthy once again. There was a lot of hype surrounding Jane's journey to Asgard in Thor The Dark World, as it was a key point for the movie. However, Loki became such an extremely popular character after the first Avengers installment that Marvel mandated much more of him within Thor The Dark World, which originally sidelined him as a character. Jane took more of a hit than most characters, as she became sidelined in Loki's place. It's okay, we're Americans! Is that supposed to make them like us? When Jane was imbued with an Infinity Stone, she became nothing more than a trigger for the plot. When Loki shows up, she gets pushed into the background, quite literally as the rivalry between the two brothers takes place. Who put me there?! You know damn well! You know damn well! While there aren't a ton of memorable scenes in Thor The Dark World, the invasion of Asgard is one of the few exceptions. When the fleet of ships arrive and Heimdall is too late to warn the Asgardians about the attack, he single-handedly takes on the first ship, creating quite a spectacle and making good use of Idris Elba's character. The manner that Thor The Dark World played out is a great example of what harsh critics of the MCU make it out to be. It introduces a not-so-interesting villain who only wants a sideline character and then barely gets through three extremely predictable acts. Eventually, it's all brought together in one final battle that isn't even that interesting, because of the big and confusing mess of screen time viewers had to sit through, leading to a very plain dynamic between Thor and Malekith. There is no doubt that the most memorable funeral in the MCU will always belong to Tony Stark. It was the culmination of the entire Infinity Saga with almost everyone in attendance, along with a few faces we didn't expect to see. But Frigga's funeral in the Dark World is a very close second. In addition to a very fitting goodbye to a very likable character and a heartbreaking demise, we also got to see a wonderful and beautiful Asgardian tradition of a spectacular and sort of Viking-style funeral, which only gets more touching when we see Thor once again talk to his mother in Endgame. While the Warriors 3 were a very lovable trio in the first installment of Thor, they unfortunately suffered the same fate as Jane Foster, being sidelined and then forgotten about, which was a real bummer since they were amazing characters. In the third installment of Thor, they were quickly killed off when Hela arrived, and this act wasn't to prove how strong she was as we already saw her destroy Mjolnir with ease, proving she had strength beyond measure. I thought you'd be happy to see me. We will more than likely never see a Planet Hulk movie or a solo Hulk movie in the MCU at all for that matter, so the Sakaar act of the film where Thor finds Hulk working as the main attraction for the Grand Master is probably the closest we are going to get to an MCU adaptation. He's a friend from work! As a consolation prize in lieu of a Planet Hulk movie, Thor's fight with Hulk in the Grandmaster's gladiatorial arena was pretty awesome. It makes sense as to why Natalie Portman had little interest in returning for the third installment of Thor after being given a semi-awkward love story in the first film and getting sidelined in the second. There wouldn't have been very much motive to pick up the character again. 
But one thing that was very disappointing to many viewers was the off-screen breakup between Thor and Jane. That was a very quick and brushed off conversation between Thor and Loki. Sorry to hear that Jane dumped you. She didn't dump me, you know. I dumped her. This is a mutual dumping. Fortunately enough, Taika Waititi is giving Jane the almighty power of Thor in the highly anticipated film Thor Love and Thunder. So, it looks like the duo may reconcile their love interest for one another and fix the mistakes they made with Jane's character in the MCU. Only time will tell. As excuses go, it's not terrible. When Thor finally faces off with his sister Hela on Asgard, he is clearly outclassed and outmatched. His seemingly invincible sister beats him in every way possible, even ripping out one of his eyes for good measure. This, however, prompts a vision from Odin that lights a fire in Thor allowing him to tap into his inner god. As the harmonic groove of Led Zeppelin's Immigrant Song plays, Thor comes back to the bridge in a glorious fashion with a beaming bolt of lightning. He takes down Hela's army as well as her in the process. Like what you saw? Check out this video here. To enter our Xbox Series S giveaway, be sure to leave a comment down below and subscribe to the channel. Be sure to hit the bell to stay notified for more of your favorite content here on Cinemash.